Decoration, no ornamentation. To the modernist, if I put decoration on my building, they would say I was being bourgeois, superfluous, dishonest, and they wouldn't want to have lunch with me. They were all about the structure. London has Big Ben in Paris, the Eiffel Tower. I'm a Chicagoan. I'll take the clock tower on our right of the one and only Wrigley Building, 1921 North Face Avenue, 1924. Commissioned by the chewing gum king, William Wrigley Jr., who as a young man had attended Burnham's Fair selling juicy fruit to gum. He brought the fair home. This is the Beaux-Arts city beautiful style of the fair. The Spanish Renaissance is the influence for the clock tower, modeled on the 11th century Geralda Tower in Spain. We approach our Grand Boulevard, Michigan Avenue. We still like to call it Bois de Miche. It was inspired by the Grand Boulevards of Paris. Daniel Barnum went to Chicago to become known as Paris on the Prairie. But did you notice the bridge is named Dusabo Bridge? We are honoring our first permanent resident, the French-speaking fur trader from Haiti, Jean Baptiste Pont du Sable started the fur trading empire right about there in 1779. Looming on our right was Spire, the new second tallest building in Chicago. From Adrian Smith for Skidmore Owings and Merrill, 2009. This is Trump International Hotel and Tower, 98 stories, 1171 feet. This is not its entire height. Notice the architect put a needle on the roof, a spire. And when you rate all the tall buildings around the world, you must turn to the council. Sounding like a Monty Python sketch, they're called the Council on Tall Buildings in the Urban Habitat. And they will recognize a spire as an organic element of the captain into it. We're going to take three weeks and not go back to our dock, but go to New Orleans instead. The North Branch right, we approach from the east. Now imagine it's the 1800s and we would all be down here having a drink, a beer. Before Chicago was a city, first they built taverns bars so we would never go thirsty again. Where you see the Bauhaus Holiday Inn was the Miller House Tavern, 1827. The new River Point office complex, which indeed put an archway in to say we're special. This is where the three branches of the river come together. Wolf Point Tavern, 1829. And at the corner of Lake Street in those early days, you would have stumbled into Chicago's only hotel, a barracks with a pig wallow for a street called the Saganesh. Saganesh is Native American, Potawatomi for Englishman. But the Saganesh Hotel was not run by the Englishman, it was named for Billy Caldwell, no. It was run by his best friend, the French-Canadian Creole fiddle player, Marc Bobian. Bobian was known for playing the fiddle at the hotel. He'd say, a fiddle like the devil, keep the hotel like hell, yee. Friends, very historic. The Saganesh Hotel, 13 electors sat down and they took a vote, 12 against one to incorporate. March 4th, 1837, Chicago becomes a city. Now, if you look around you, the north branch of the river, we're gonna to tour just a little bit. This is still a working industrial river, but we are in the midst of a residential renaissance. More people are moving into Chicago than leaving it now because we have brought the loop, the business district, the theater and nightlife district back to life. So, Whoop Point Tower is over here. That's gonna be residential. Another cool thing you might notice, it's more recreational with kayaking. I want to give a shout out to San Antonio, Texas, as a matter of fact. San Antonio was reclaiming their river in the 1980s and spurred Chicago on to be a hot time in the old town of the night. The legend would not die. So in 1997, a good century after the actual fire, and that's the odd thing. We've known it was a hoax since 1893 when Michael LaHern, the newspaper reporter, uh, told the whole story how the guys faked it during the World's Fair. He talked about it. Spirit of I Will has driven Chicago forward ever since. It was a spirit of I Will that gave us in 1974 the tallest building in the world at that time. It's in front of you now. I call it by its old school name. I give you the one, the only thing. One feet. We don't count the antenna. Thank you, but you know Fayoun from the Tuvan band, The Lash, were here. He'd be shaking his head and saying, "No, Kevin, more strong. I'm working on it." 1,451 feet. You don't count the antenna. Now you see how it's a bunch of boxes like stacked together. Skidmore, Owings, and Merrill sums this up with two words: bundled tube system, like a bundle of six wrapped together for strength. Nine contiguous tubes, each 75 foot square. Two up to 60, 50 floors, 266. Three go up to 90, the final 110 stories. Terminating because you're in the Windy City. Although the nickname for Chicago Windy City had nothing to do with the wind, it referred to our early politicians being like me, full of hot air. 
That's why they called us the Windy City. It is a windy city with 81 mile an hour winds. You have to deal with that. Personally, when I look at the Sirius Tower and I think about the wind, it brings to mind the great Chinese philosopher Lao Tzu, writing in the Tao Te Ching, can one learn to be flexible? Can you follow the way of nature, the Tao? Can you bend and still remain straight? And I look at this only in the Gothic, you see it looks a little like the turret of a Gothic castle, but then look to the crown, a very modern feature. A 10-story drum of glass, close to 2,000 lights inside. Later this evening, you will see this building from a distance, illuminated against the dark and wondrous Chicago American night. And you may hear Chicagoans calling it the White Castle. Now, would we call it the White Castle because we long for some Game of Thrones? The North remembers medieval age past? No. We call it the White Castle because it makes us long for sliders. White Castle hamburgers, the stomach remembers. For the uninitiated, White Castle is a famous Midwestern restaurant with a similar neo-Gothic facade. Friends, I'm not trying to make a joke here. I had a White Castle executive from the restaurant take my tour. I verify my information. White Castle and 311 South Wacker were both modeled after the water tower, your visitor center, which is waiting you to escape the fire. It's at Michigan Avenue right now. Look how this building on our right got more attention from tour boats by putting themselves on the map of the Chicago River. That red dot is that building. We never talked about this building too much. Then they put the map on and they put themselves on the map. That's where you are on the river. Gaze up at the Sears Willis Tower one more time, my friends. And as you do, can you imagine that you are French? Your name is Alain Robert, but the whole world calls you French Spider-Man. I love Alain Robert. I follow him on Facebook. He is the French Daredevil, the building climber. August 1999, he came to our Sears Tower. T-shirt, sweatpants, rubber sole shoes, no climbing equipment, one little hook on his belt in case he got hired, tired halfway up. Amazing, this pop. In two and a half hours, he was on the roof. He went to my second favorite city, San Francisco, Golden Gate Bridge, home to Paris, Eiffel Tower. Kuala Lumpur, Petronas Towers, Taipei 101 of Taiwan. What's he doing? He's graduating up higher and higher. And then the jelly jar at the top of the mountain. With their permission, Alain Robert, French daredevil, climbed the Burj Khalifa in Dubai. A philosophical interlude. Can we consider the mind of building climber Alain Robert? How he looks at the universe? Because in its simplest definition, what is architecture? It is the way that we interact with and define the space we live in. You or I look at the Sears Tower perhaps saying beauty or function. Alain Robert sneaks up behind us and says, Aha, I have found yet another obstacle to help me overcome my greatest fear in life. He's afraid of heights. That's why he climbs. He's trying to get over it. Now let me be clear. I do not want anyone to rush out and try to climb a tall building. No, no, no. But like Mr. Robert, can you just take a second, like he does, see the universe through new eyes? You see, I was taught to think this way by an architect philosopher who always said, consider the universe while you're riding spaceship Earth. He seemed to be a verb when he turned the tetrahedron into the geodesic dome, Epcot Center at Disney World. He's the reason in chemistry, the carbon-60 molecule was named Buckminster Fullerene, Bucky Fuller. If you don't remember the work of architect Bucky Fuller, I would ask you to look him up tonight and turn in your papers to me tomorrow by 11 a.m. class. Thanks. An engineering marvel on your right, the former Chicago Mercantile Exchange Center, two 40-store office towers originally housed a 40,000-square-foot column-free trading floor. Ceiling struts supported by the load-bearing walls. However, look what they did for office space. The top 34 stories cantilevered out, sending weight down, and they serrated the corners so they could double the number of corner offices per floor, meaning double the number of people could feel very important. If I may switch from the building and use my own arms for illustration as the towers, Houston, we have a problem. The towers are too heavy. Now here's what's going on. These are the two towers. Because of that extra weight, you know what's gonna happen? Those towers are gonna shift their weight. And if you don't pay attention, here's a little time-lapse photography. You're gonna watch your building start here and end up here, tilting under their own weight. Now that doesn't happen, why? 
because you have a great from uh, the Czech Republic structural engineering firm, the Alfred Beneshi company, and using mathematics, they decide instead of building the tower straight, they will give them what we might call a camber, an artificial bow. And they do this by pulling the floor plates out one eighth of an inch per floor from ground to midpoint and then reverse it. Are you still with me here? We've just given our towers that little camber. Now the weight shifts. What happens? The bow causes it to simply press down until it's in a straight line again. So instead of tilting in, it realigns itself.